Okay, so we are here for episode 15 of Dragon Ball Super. This episode is called Heroic Satan, Cause a Miracle, a Challenge from Outer Space. Uh, this is a pretty interesting episode. This is technically the first episode of the Resurrection F, or Frieza, New Frieza Saga, Resurrection Frieza Saga. However you want to say it, this is the first episode of that saga. We're now past the battle between Goku and Beerus, and now we are on a big-time filler episode. Let me just get that out of the way right away. Yes, this, this is a filler episode, but let's not let that stop us from having fun! This episode picks up with Goku and Chi-Chi having, I guess, lunch, because it, it is uh, daytime outside. And Chi-Chi tells Goku, basically, that he, you know, he needs to get back to work and that Goku can't train. And Goku is like, what? I'm in shape. I gotta, I gotta train. I gotta get as strong as Beerus. And Chi-Chi tells Goku that all of the money has actually run out. All of that money Goku got from Mr. Satan. And Goku is like, what? Where'd it go? But I guess Chi-Chi spent all of it on the in preparation for Videl and Gohan having their baby. So Chi-Chi is forcing Goku back to work. It cuts over and we see Gohan and Videl. You know, Gohan is being what looks to be like, you know, a good father slash husband. Videl's going to cook dinner, but Gohan sits her down. He's like, no, no, I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook. I'm going to cook. Don't worry about it. Then they do show us uh, Vegeta real quick. Vegeta is in, like, you know, one of the old Dragon Ball Z locations, just, like, a desert or, like, a mountain area. And he's just standing, like, on top of this big mountain, just looking up into the sky. And he's thinking about how Goku surpassed the Super Saiyan God and he, you know, became above a god and was so strong. And Vegeta makes a vow that he will become stronger than Goku. Then we see Mr. Satan, he's preparing to go to a press conference to explain to the world exactly what happened, why those shockwaves that were caused from Goku and Beerus' fight, why they were resonating around the world, and why they had fucked things up. Uh, Mr. Satan walks by Boo, who's just sitting on the couch reading a book, and he says he'll be back later. And I couldn't help but think, yeah, Boo, keep that ass right there, sit down, because you're the one who had to start shit with Beerus, so shut up, Boo. I don't want to hear your mouth for like five episodes. And Boo, when Frieza shows up this time, you would better help out, unlike in the movie Resurrection of Frieza, when you didn't do a goddamn thing. Then we get a click, uh, quick glimpse of a spaceship traveling through Earth. And, you know, they bring up like a little screen where it's like, oh, our mortal enemies are not on this planet. But very clearly, they're headed towards Earth for some reason. We'll find out who they are in, in just a second here. But then it goes back to Mr. Satan giving the press conference. And he begins telling everyone about how the God of Destruction came to destroy the planet and he went to stop him. And it is comical because he can't remember what Beerus' name is. I remember there was a similar little gimmick in uh, Final Fantasy IX where Baku couldn't remember um, Princess Garnet's teacher's name. It was pretty funny. Uh, and so, Mr. Satan continues telling this story of how he found his lair, and he begins fighting the God of Destruction, and finally he says a name, Bebus, which is obviously not Beerus' name, so it's like, come on, Mr. Satan, you gotta be paying attention there, motherfucker. But Mr. Satan tells the story of how he fights Beerus, and it shows a flash of how he, you know, transforms into a Super Saiyan and he gets the power of a god and he defeats Beebus. After Mr. Satan gets done telling his story, the spaceship we saw previously lands and like some, they look kind of like, uh, like dog, dogs slash like cross with humans, like, you know, dogs standing on two legs. That's kind of what they look like. And... Initially, Mr. Satan and uh, other people are scared because it is a, an alien ship, but they reveal that they are actually uh, peaceful, and they're from the planet Snack, which obviously must be a 
reference to the fact that they are essentially just dogs. And they, they say that they're there to greet the hero who defeated Beerus and that the universe is a buzz about the fact that Beerus was stopped from destroying the planet. And they do like this really, really dumb, like, uh, they call it their greeting. Their, you know, and it's, it's just Akira Toriyama just being ridiculous like always. And then Mr. Satan says that he is the one who defeated Beerus. So these aliens think he's the one who, you know, defeated Beerus. So they give him a medal in honor of Beerus, you know, being prevented from destroying a planet. And then there's three of them. And the third one, his name is Galby. He wants to challenge Mr. Satan to a fight because he wants to see, you know, exactly how strong he is. And, you know, that we can't give over the medal until we're sure of his strength. Like, you know, yeah, okay, we've seen this type of thing over and over and over again. But of course, you know, Mr. Satan is not going to beat this giant alien in a fight. And so he sneaks off. He does the old Dragon Ball Z trick of saying he's got a stomach ache and he's got to go use the bathroom. And we see him in the bathroom, like, trying to call up Goku, but no one answers at Goku's house. And he tries to call Vegeta, but no one answers at Vegeta's house. And so he's brought back out, and uh, the aliens have prepared an arena for them to fight on. And it's funny, because Mr. Satan is thinking, like, oh, if only Goku was here, or Krillin, or even that green guy. And I'm like, oh, man, come on, Mr. Satan, you can't even remember Piccolo's name? I'm so hurt by that. Come on, man. And then, of course, we get the comical uh, scene where Galby is standing there, kind of like sizing Mr. Satan up. And he's like, oh, just as I would expect from the great uh, martial artist of Earth, I can't sense his energy at all. And it's like, oh, come on, no, Mr. Satan, he's just weak. He, he, he can't do jack shit. And then, of course, just in the nick of time, Goku just happens to be flying by. Uh, his tractor is broken and he can't fix it. And he mentions to Mr. Satan, who runs over, because Mr. Satan needs, you know, one of his pupils, someone to fight this battle, not hi actually him do it. And Goku tells Mr. Satan that his track is broken, and he just went to Capsule Corporation to see if Bulma could fix it, but no one was there. And he asks Mr. Satan if Mr. Satan can fix it, and Mr. Satan says, yeah, yeah, I'll fix it, but first beat this guy. And Goku is like, oh, well, Chi-Chi told me I can't train Ever since she told me I can't train, my body's been itching for a fight. And so, Goku jumps in the arena, prepared to fight the dude. And of course, Mr. Satan plays it up for the crowd, and he's like, Oh, before you can battle me, you must first defeat this man to prove to me that you are a capable fighter. And it's like, oh boy, Mr. Satan, he sure is good at just spinning things in his favor all of the time. As if Goku flying by at that moment was not the coincidence of coincidences, simultaneously, Chi-Chi and Piccolo are walking by the arena where Goku and uh, Galbi are about to begin fighting, and we could see they have, like, all these supplies, all this stuff that apparently Chi-Chi bought for Videl and Gohan, and it's funny, Piccolo is like, oh, why am I forced to do this? And you can see he's got this huge backpack on full of stuff. And they're walking by. And of course Piccolo instantly spots Goku. Probably senses his energy. And Chi Chi flips out that Goku's fighting and not doing any work. And so Goku quickly runs over to Mr. Satan and asks Mr. Satan to punch him. Because, you know, Goku wants to immediately leave now that Chi Chi's right there and Chi Chi can see him. And so Mr. Satan punches him. Because Goku doesn't want to show everyone that he can fly. And so Goku kind of is like pretending that he's being knocked back from the punch. But he's like flying. And it just he just looks so goofy. And he flies over to where his tractor is. And picks it up. And like he's continuing to like flip in air while <laughs> like flying away. Just pretending. And <laughs> I just... <laughs> I thought that was uh, pretty funny actually. But then of course... Uh, you know, Mr. Satan is all alone now. And it's funny, because Piccolo remarks, like, oh, he's running away. <laughs> Something about that, man, just killed me. But, <laughs> alright, so the battle begins between Mr. Satan and Galby, and Mr. Satan just spends the whole time running away. Until the crowd begins to wonder, like, oh, is he really strong enough to beat the God of Destruction? Did he lie to us? 
And so Mr. Satan stops, ready to do battle. And just at that moment, as if there hasn't already been, you know, 15 coincidences that make no sense, uh, B, remember the dog that, you know, kind of helped Boo and Mr. Satan become friends in Dragon Ball Z, this dog shows up. And so now these aliens are scared of dogs. And so the alien sees B there and he's frozen in fear. And Mr. Satan punches him, but that doesn't do anything because obviously Mr. Satan's weak. But this alien, Galby, is so intimidated by a dog that he just runs away, gets in the spaceship, and the other two ambassadors are also terrified. So they run over, they do their customary dumb greeting again, which is, I guess, them saying goodbye. Then they hop in their ship and they just fly the fuck away. And so everyone is like, oh, Mr. Satan, the hero, he's scared of him. And it's like, wow, man, talk uh, so many coincidences. Boy, Mr. Satan, you sure are lucky. This is not how life works. Goku flying by, then instantly Chi Chi and Piccolo are there. Oh, hey, good thing he brought B with him. Like, just, <laughs> just absolutely insane. Then, as the episode closes, we see Goten and Chi-Chi having dinner, and Goten is wondering where Goku is, and Chi-Chi's basically saying, like, oh, when he gets here, I've got something for him, and it's obvious she's gonna beat his ass, and then we see Goku outside the house peeking in the window, and then he kind of falls down, like, shit, I'm so hungry, I can't get in, and it's like, come on, Goku, you gotta be the boss of this house, you're the Super Saiyan God, man, you can't let her play you like that. But <laughs> that's, uh, you know, this has been a filler episode. There really wasn't, you know, that much going on. Really, almost nothing in this episode contributed to the online... Like, n nothing here contributed to, you know, the fact that Frieza is about to show up. They at least could have shown us maybe a flash of, like, Pilaf collecting some of the Dragon Balls. That actually has something to do with the plot. But no... No, no, Weiss and Beerus didn't show up at all. You know, nothing. Well, we didn't see Jack fucking shit. And then in the next episode preview, we see a bunch of scenes of Vegeta and Weiss. And it looks like Vegeta is giving Weiss food. And, you know, it looks like Vegeta is going to try and become Weiss's pupil so that he can get that strength. And it is interesting to note that, remember in the Battle of the Gods movie, Beerus reveals to Goku that Weiss is stronger than himself at the end of the movie, but that has not yet been addressed here in Dragon Ball Super. It has not been stated at all that Weiss is stronger, and there have been no hints that Weiss is stronger, aside from him stopping Bulma's spaceship from destroying her cruise ship. Besides that, we've seen almost nothing from Weiss to indicate that he is the strong one, so, the fact that this next episode looks like we're going to start getting into that, and Vegeta's going to train, I certainly hope they're going to show at how, like, Vegeta becomes Super Saiyan God, and then eventually becomes the Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan Blue transformation. I'll be very curious to see how they address all that stuff. <laughs> 